I'm Dr Emily Grossman and this is Brit Lab Cinema Science, the show where we pick apart the movie scenes and see if there's any real life science inside their stories. You know the scene. It's when a baddie or a freak storm blasts a hole in the side of a plane, causing all and sundry to be sucked out into the sky and go hurtling towards the earth and certain death. People, suitcases, even rows of seats. Nothing escapes the sucking. Except maybe our hero, who's managed to grab on to some conveniently positioned straps. In this scene, Bond fires a gun through a plane window and then casually holds onto the luggage rack, while a tubby Goldfinger is sucked along the length of the plane and then squeezed out of the window. So, is the physics factually correct, or does the science suck? Well, it all depends on three main things. The volume of the cabin, the size of the hole, and the difference in pressure between the inside and the outside of the plane. As you rise higher up in the Earth's atmosphere, there's less air pushing down on you from above, decreasing the air pressure. Air under low pressure is less dense, meaning the molecules are more spread out. This makes it harder for the body to get the oxygen that it needs. The effects of low pressure usually begin to be felt at heights of around 8,000 feet, where there's about 25% less oxygen in the surrounding air than at sea level. This is classified as high altitude. When planes travel above this height, their cabins are normally required to be pressurised to create a safe and comfortable environment for everyone inside. Most commercial airplanes cruise at around 36,000 feet. Without cabin pressurisation, the pilot would fall unconscious through lack of oxygen in less than a minute. Not ideal. To pressurise the cabin, low pressure air from outside the plane passes through compressors in the engine and then flows into the cabin under higher pressure. Now, if a hole forms in the side of the plane, there will be a sudden, rapid decompression as the pressures try to balance each other out, causing air from the inside of the aircraft to rush out. The higher up the plane is, the greater the difference in pressure between the inside and the outside of the plane, so the more dramatic this decompression will be. This explosive decompression can be strong enough to suck out unsuspecting passengers sitting right by the hole. But, the plane has to be pretty high up and the hole pretty enormous. And this has only happened a handful of times throughout the history of commercial flight. Even then, the pressures will equalise within a couple of seconds. So as long as you're not sucked out immediately, you should be okay. No crazy wind tunnels. Bullet holes just won't cut it. And as long as the plane doesn't disintegrate when the initial hole forms, unlikely, the hole probably won't get any larger. You might hear an explosive sound and experience a drop of temperature, a fog of water vapour forming, the feeling of air being sucked out of your lungs and a bloating in the abdomen. Not exactly life ending, but your jeans may feel a little tight. So as long as you keep your seatbelt on, put your oxygen mask on and don't go pottering over to admire the view, you should be okay. In fact, in 2011, when a five foot square hole opened up in the roof of a commercial flight cruising at 37,000 feet, the explosive decompression didn't suck anyone out and the hole stayed pretty much the size it was, minding its own business. Nothing terribly dramatic, really. So, do any movies get it right? Well, it's a golden oldie, but in danger diabolic when the undercarriage opens. Apart from the poor bloke who's thrown out, nothing more than a few skirts are ruffled. So, we'll give the European crime caper a cinema science pass. Do you have any favourite sucky plane hole scenes to share? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to hit subscribe for more great science from BritLab.